Cheers, mate. Look at this. Thank you for joining us. I'm not at all nervous. Right now, right now, we have a very not nervous Roy, aka Penboy Roy, if you have ever seen him on YouTube. We're here on YouTube, so you can go somewhere else and see him there. But uh, Roy, you've got a fountain pen review channel. I have do. You not? I do. It's called the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel. No, it's called the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review <laughs> Channel. Check it out at the end of this video. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You don't thank want to cut that. off from the video you for that. before the end of the video. It's just, it's just not courteous. Now, to be a hundred percent honest, I've never heard you say Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel so subdued. Really? It has such energy usually. Usually for my own intro, yes, because you know it's my channel. But uh, you know. Um, you, and you gesticulate so well, boom, you do. All right, you, fine. You good morning, good back. afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thanks once again for clicking on the video. <laughs> I How's love that? it. I love it. And, you, and you've got a very solid approach to your uh, video reviews. You've got a nice format. It's got energy. It's, it's very different. It's a different flavor than I think most of the fountain pen review channels out there. When I started my fountain pen review channel, I did it in my living room with the most boring background, I think, imaginable. With Which most, was what? With my office space. Oh, okay, there you, you go. You can see a kitty litter box in the background. <laughs> you can see like my the mess I leave and stuff like that. And I also cut off my face because... That was painful. Well, it was actually, I'm like, like why would I subject people to my face? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, it's just like... So you were just doing the hand shots? No, no. So basically, it was kind of creepy. Well, I found out later that it was kind of creepy. So I just cut off. You hate hearing that when someone has to tell you, hey, yeah, dude, it's like, that thing you did, it's creepy. <laughs> creepy. <laughs> so, you know, it's just like, and then uh, my buddy was like, listen, just just put yourself in it. You know, I said, you know, like, my head is abnormally large relative to the rest of my body. I think it looks body. wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm like, I don't know if my camera can capture that within the frame. <laughs> so I'm like, now I got to buy an expensive camera and nine. put it like 65 feet back. I don't have that kind of real estate in my room. <laughs> So, you know, and then I just started doing stuff and then like I noticed every week the background would change mm. because every week I would not clean my office room. Different life stages. Right. So yeah. my office room would get clean depending on how severe the yelling from my wife was. So sometimes life stages like, as well. Right. And then I would just bring it out into the uh, living room and then I'd make a mess of the living room. So that didn't go over very well. And now well. you've got this awesome logo background. So yeah. So it's a green screen or blue screen? It's or, a green screen. Yep. So I, I, I throw up a green screen because that way I can shoot it anywhere. Right. You know, sometimes I'm not home when I shoot them. And that logo, super cool with that fist just gripping that thing. You drew that, I bet. Yeah, I drew that. And, and you're, so you're, you are somewhat of an artist. I've seen your comic art. Like you do some awesome superhero stuff as well. I, uh, um, I wouldn't call myself an artist. You're an I artist. I would call myself... You're an artist. You draw and you do it well. He who imitates an artist. Right? Don't all artists do that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. more of the 90s, like like Mark Silvestri. Which is the best. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. we were just talking about, uh, you know, Jim Lee and Wildcats yes, yes. and back in the day. Oh, there's some great artists back in I 90s thought, comics. I thought Mark Silvestri was better than Jim Lee, in my personal opinion. He's up there. He's, he's up yeah, there. He's I wouldn't have a childhood there. without either of them. Um, so when you started using fountain pens, were you using them to draw or was it the art that brought you into fountain pens or was it the hmm. written word? No, it was, so when I was a kid, I was in fourth grade, my father was telling me like, oh, handwriting is really important, you know, and stuff like that. And I said to myself, I don't care. And you know, he As got one does. me, <laughs> he got me, um, a fountain pen and saying, if you use this fountain pen, it's going to make your handwriting really good. And I was like, oh, really? So I went to school, and I, by this time I was in fifth grade, and it was a cartridge. And like, by like an hour, it ran out of ink. And I'm like, this sucks. So at recess, I used it to dig up earthworms from the ground. What? Yeah. So that's one of, the, one of the few, like, posit like um, excuse me, one of the few things that my dad gave me that I remember. You know, like, as a matter of fact, everything he gave me, I ended up destroying intentionally or accidentally. Well, now we know a new use for fountain pens. Right. So, Multi-purpose. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? <laughs> um, unless the nibs are cheap. You know, like a noodler's nib, you replace it for like five bucks. You know. And, there you go. So you know. if you are somewhere and you need to dig up earthworms and you just happen to only have a fountain pen on you. Don't use it. That's don't what use it. That's what fingernails are for. <laughs> so 
I never remembered what happened to that fountain pen after that incident. Oh, wouldn't I, that be a great artifact to have? Yeah. For someone who does a fountain pen review channel, to have that. I don't remember how my dad reacted to it. It might be a traumatizing reaction, so I don't remember. But, um, you know, eventually later on, just from doing a lot of writing and, you know, just injuries that I sustained, you know, just from, you know, training in MMA and, you know, boxing and kickboxing, I've had this chronic neck pain. And then someone suggested to me, listen, if you're writing a lot, use like a felt tip pen, you know? So I'm like, I'm not writing with a marker all day long. And they're like, why don't you use a fountain pen? Do you know what a fountain pen is? I'm like, you know what? I actually I do. dug up an earthworm one time. <laughs> they were highly effective. I do right. recall that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, you know, my bug excavation. You know? <laughs> so I was just thinking to myself, yeah, I know, I know fountain pens. And when I used to draw a lot, I used to get those like replaceable dip nibs in India. You yeah. Know, and I used to do that. And, you know, I know how to use you know, something like that. So I uh, thought about it. I gestated it over it. Is that a, was that a word? I, sure. Did I make it up? No. Okay. Perfect. And then one time my wife was like, what do you want for Christmas? You know, this was years ago. And I was like, gee, I, I don't know, something Xbox or PlayStation related. And she's like, how about a fountain pen? And I'm like, why on earth would you even... S okay. <laughs> So then I went to uh, Staples one time. We had to buy Staples supply stuff. And then I saw a cross Adventura. And then I'm like, hey, there's a fountain pen. And it's a navy blue color. I'm going to I'm gonna buy it because I know the name Cross. Yeah. I bought it. And I'm glad I didn't use that pen as the, you know, the thing that identified with fountain pens. Because for me, it was so broad. Mm. And it bled on all the crappy paper that I used. Yeah, that's a tough thing with a new fountain pen user because they need to be using the it right type of paper. It felt very flimsy, too. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm at work and I'm writing one time and my buddy comes up to me, my buddy Marcos. He's like, using fountain pens, huh? I'm like, yes, get over it. Don't make fun of me. And he's like, I'm not going to make fun of you. He pulls out a Pilot Custom 92. Oh. And he's like, uh, he's like, hmm. And I'm like, well, that looks a lot better than mine. He's like, it's yours. What? Yeah. What? He really... Tell me you still have that one at least. Of course. All right. You know, he also, like, two weeks later gave me um, a Twisby, Twisby Mini. So this was the Heritage 92, the piston yeah. filler? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not the... 91. 91. So it oh, wasn't okay. a piston filler. It was the cartridge converter one. Okay. So those aren't those aren't sold in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how I'm he got that. that one. Well, but, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, so, so that was a that was night and day, I'm guessing. Absolutely. So that gold nib with a, it was a fine gold nib, and then writing with that nib, I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. He's like, you can fill it with your own ink. I'm like, what? What do you mean? There you go. And he's like, you can fill it from a bottle, and I was like, okay. So I tried doing that, and my god, the addiction spread like yep. a virus. Hence my terminology for getting other people into pens, yeah. the fountain pen virus. Yep. I call it the fountain it's real. pen virus. You know, it's, it's a real thing. I don't think anybody will in the in, that's a fan of the fountain pen itself or anybody watching this will dispute that there is a virus. Oh, absolutely. It. And it, and it's a raging, like, virulent virus. <laughs> it's in its small stages right now, but I tell you, in like 10 years, everybody's going to have it. And I think the, that more, would be great. the more technology advances, the more people are going to look for you know the opposite you know to you know to get away from the technology that and all is that interesting. stuff i think yeah. that that's what's going to happen and i think that's what should happen so what what prompted you after you got this revelation to um, you know once you had this amazing writing instrument in your hand to say i need to do video reviews oh that was that okay so i bought the uh, Panider la grande beleza mm -hmm. from you guys it was the first one what was it called the dolomite green yes right or okay. Yes. Yeah, it was a Dolomite Green. And what was really cool was the one that you guys had pictured on the site was the one that I actually ended up having, you know? I thought it was such a beautiful pen, and there were so many elements about it that I thought were wonderful. But there were also elements about it that weren't so wonderful. So before I dropped... I'm, 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 I'm hearing, I'm hearing a video structure yeah. <laughs> now. So for me, it was like, you know, I'm looking up all these YouTube reviews. I'm seeing Brian Galea, Brian Galea, all these other things. And I'm like, there's no reviews on this thing. And there wouldn't be because it's so new. And it's also a big bag of coin, you know. So I thought, you know what, I'll just do one review. I'm going to just do one review because I'm not the type of person that likes to be on camera. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm, believe it or not, I'm more of a shy person than I appear to be. That is kind of tough to believe. So, um, But I'm the same way, so I totally get it. Right, right. I, that's, that's, you're lying on camera. I'm we not. didn't swear to any oath of truth here, did we? Because 
this guy. Anyway. No, I am. In, in crowds and stuff, it, mm. it kind of freaks me out. Yeah. But can I, can I get back to my true story? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'll stop so, living. What happened was, I did this one review, and then like within like two days, it got like 50 views, and they were all positive comments. And I'm like, why would they say good things about my review? And then I got subscribers. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll do another one. And I did the same way. I threw my phone on an apple, leaning back against a bug. And I did another one, and I did a few more, and then I, then I realized my subscriber count keeps going up, my view counts keep going up. And I'm saying to myself, well, if they're subscribing, then they gotta get something better. So I started yeah. just upping the ante. I there got go. a, a lav mic. I reached out to Fig Boot from Fig Boot on Pens. Great guy. Solid dude. Yep. Solid dude. And then I said to him, listen, I'm gonna do this. Could you give me some advice? Because uh, people watching deserve better than what I'm doing. <laughs> That's very kind of you. I don't get butt hurt very easily, so tear it up. Man, he teared it up. Really? Yeah, yeah. He Respectfully, me... I'm sure. Oh, yeah, no, no. Everything that he said was bulleted, and it was, you know, point in fact. He wasn't like, listen, you need skull reduction surgery. You need to do something <laughs> about your face. You need to wear a mask. So he you didn't know? say any of that. No, he didn't. What a guy. <laughs> what a guy. He should have. But what happened was, he gave me all this advice. Then a week later, he released a video called, So You Want to Be a Content Creator. And it was just so perfect, perfect. because yeah. I, I was a big fan of the show, The Ultimate Fighter, which you know about. I do, I do. I saw the first and season. Then I, just, that, that I was working line. at Circuit City, and I saw the uh, Bonner, oh, yeah? Bonner Griffin fight oh. there. I'm like, what is this? My God, I yeah. tell you what it was. It was like Rocky in real life, <laughs> only takedowns and ground and pound. But anyway, Fig Boot. You know, back to Fig Boot. I took to heart everything he said. Yeah, he's and got some, a lot of experience. He's been doing it for a lot of. I took what he said and I internalized it and made it into my own which makes it a little different than what he said. But he also said, don't follow all the rules that I just Perfect. put out. So I started doing that. And then here's another crazy thing. My wife was watching a video of this chick. Her name was, I forgot her name, but her channel was called um, From Head to Toe. It was a makeup channel. And I'm watching her video and I was like, can I watch that? And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, sure, sure. So I'm watching it and I'm like, I got to copy your style. I love this. She did jump cuts. Yeah. You know, she used a really wide open aperture. And I'm like, how does, how does she make the background blurry? You know, like, does she spray, like, all her stuff with, like, fuzzy stuff? Like, what's <laughs> going on here? Then I started looking into cameras. Depth of field and all that good oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, like, that whole depth of field yeah. thing didn't make any sense to me in the beginning. And it's just like, I just like, okay, so if I spend a lot of money, can I get depth of field? So I started asking around. People's like, no, don't spend a lot of money. Get this, get that, get the other thing. I watched a lot of YouTube reviews. And then I finally just got a DSLR and SL2. And I love it. It's small. It's not as good as your camera there. And then I started editing stuff. Once I started to realize, wow, I can edit stuff, I just went buck wild and I started doing crazy stuff like the Conklin Classic review. Yeah, that yeah. Did, well, you know? That was one thing I was wondering. What is what was the what's your favorite moment that you uh, got to do in all of your review videos? Oh, that's a tough question. I don't know. Cause you've done some fun stuff. Was it was it was it shooting the Avatar? Um, I don't, I, you know, so here's the thing. I don't like guns. That so not that then? So, no. Okay, so, what no, about, I, let's see. What about the awards? Yeah, the, the, award the show, Savage the, Pen Awards. Yeah, the Savage Pen Awards. So what I liked about the Savage Pen Award was that everybody from, like, different retailers, different distributors, and everything, I told them up front, listen, I want you to make this video, do this as you would, and then send it to me. Other people are going to do the same thing, and I'm not going to tell you who else it is. But they're your competitors. You guys have to play nice, right? They're your competitors. Get over it, you know? But it's all, like, everybody in the same thing. Yeah. And then I cut it up so that everybody is, like, it's, like, almost like a conversation. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thing. And, um, you know, I made a disclaimer for anybody who decides to watch it uh, that um, my little bit in the beginning has is in no way representative of any of the distributors or retailers. Always involved. a good idea. Yeah, just because uh, you know I, I kind of say things off the cuff and you know. And I think I think there's some appeal to that. And everybody's got different flavor preferences when you're watching your videos. You've got a lot of options. You know, you might gravitate more toward one style of video than the other. But mm -hmm. if you want high energy fun unpredictability i that's that's what i go to when i really look for absolutely i think there's predictability i have the background information where i talk about there there is history. there's an element of predictability you do the good the bad and the ugly mm -hmm. and then the neutral zone 
but then there's also you definitely I definitely don't know what you're gonna say for right. sure. There's always an element. I'm like, oh, did he just do that? Or like, there, there's like, that's what keeps me coming back. So maybe it's your thing, maybe it's not. I enjoy it. I think a lot of other people do. I appreciate and that. I appreciate the fact that you are in the community and a part Thank of you. the YouTube fountain pen sphere. You know, uh, I gotta tell you, like uh, one of the things that really inspired the elements of my channel was my wife. I know everybody says this about their wife, but um, one, my wife is really honest. So like when I do a video and I put it up, she'll just be like, honey, you suck. Or she'll say, honey, it's not as bad as the last one. Or she'll say, honey, this is good. This is less bad. <laughs> this, this is less, uh, she's very honest and, and there's never any reading between lines with her. Fantastic. And she said, one of the things she said was, just be yourself. And everybody says that, but she was really like clear. She was like, don't, don't just be yourself like everybody says it. It's generic. She's like, really be yourself. Say stuff without saying profanity and without, you know, trying to just don't offend people, you know, but say what you would say. And I do. Yeah. Be real. Sometimes it offends people. But yeah, you know what? That's the internet. Right. Um, and if they don't like it, there are plenty of other places to go. Yes. Which is great. That's another reason why I don't, I don't uh, sell anything. I don't right. make any money off of it. So the fountain pen community in particular, compared to I think any other community on YouTube, is a smart, autonomous community. I don't feel like I need to say subscribe and like, because I'm not selling anything. If I were a retailer, yes, I would. But I really don't feel the need to say subscribe and like. They know what to do. If they like it, they'll subscribe. If they don't like it, they won't subscribe. It's Absolutely. As as that. I don't need to Absolutely. tell them what to do. You know what I mean? I well, we're going to um, wrap this up, but I do want to ask you a very, very important question. Okay. Something that we talk a lot about here. Cake or pie, Roy? Mm, solid question. Okay. Neither. I'm sorry. I just, you know, it's just... <laughs> just cut yeah. it off. You know? <laughs> I, I just, you know... What are you I trying to do? I what are you trying to do? I don't really eat cakes or pies, but uh, I like... I, I, there's no salvation. I just don't like cake or pies. You know what I mean? Like oh, I mean, ice cream. What, what what are we doing for dessert? All right. Oh. So I do like ice cream. Okay. I'll eat it once in a while. Wow. Um, wow. You are a you are a loose cannon. My I friend. know. I know. Just just a rogue. Just like, a rogue. All I right. Like, uh, I like I like uh, seltzer water a whole lot. Seltzer water. I'm asking cake and pie, and you're talking about seltzer water. When it comes to the pens, I'll take both. If oh, it comes to the Retro 51 Rollerballs, I'll take both. Because I've been into those. I've been into those these days. Well, if you want a Retro 51 Kicker Pie Rollerball, you know where to get it. Just get both. Just get um, both. All right. Don't take sides. All right. It sparks conversations and arguments and debates and then food fights and stuff like that. Oh, and the last thing Roy wants is to spark debate. Right. I don't yeah. want that. Of course not. Just take both. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, it has been a fantastic treat having you here today. And you're going to the DC Pen Show later. Yes, So I that's am. exciting. Brian and Rachel are already there. That's why I am sitting here and not Brian. So if you're there, enjoy yourself. If you're not, you can follow us on social. Brian has his personal Instagram. Obviously, Roy's going to be out there as well. So hashtag DC Pen Show 2019, something like that. Check it out. Have fun. Have a great weekend. Or no, week. Either way, thank you for watching. Check and out my right channel on. at Penboy, search Penboy Roy on YouTube.